Does God give me a willing and obedient spirit? God give me a willing and obedient spirit. Thank you, Lord. Are any of you cold? Do you want the air off? No. Is this for Are you cold? No. Okay. God, give me a willing and obedient spirit. Amen? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for the word of God. Father, as we go through this word tonight, speak to our hearts. Lord, show us by the Holy Spirit of God what you want us to know tonight, God. Father, help us tonight, Lord God, to be willing and obedient, Lord, in our lives and everything we do and everything we say, God. Help us, Lord, as, as the church, God. I know we're a small church and we're not... A, we're just a small part of what Pueblo's all, the Church of Pueblo, but Father, tonight, God, you can start right here, you can start right now. You can, we can, Father, Lord God, be the ones to light this city on fire and to teach them, Father, what it is to come back to the presence of God. Father, anoint tonight, bless tonight, God. Father, speak to us, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God, give me a willing and an obedient spirit. Amen? Yeah. Isaiah chapter 1. It says this. It says, the vision, the, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, uh, when he saw when he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, or the body of Christ. Amen? What he saw concerning that body of Christ in the days of, of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, king of Judah, hear o, hear, o heavens, and give ear, O earth. He says, For the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished and brought up children. Remember I told you God doesn't have grandchildren? Yeah. Nephews, nieces, brothers, sisters, He has children. He said this to the body of Christ, I have brought up children. He says, and they have rebelled against me. He says, the ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider, uh, con does not consider. He says, ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, amen? Children uh, that corrupted, that, children that are corrupt, corruptors. He says, they have forgot, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto, unto anger. He says, they are gone away backwards. Remember I said talking about backsliding? Yeah. That's what he said. These people have backslidden in their hearts. Hmm? He says, why should, why should you be stricken anymore? Amen? So he's talking to a people here that are backslidden. And he's talking about disciplining his people. And I don't know if you've ever been to a place or had a, had a child in your, in your life, you had a child, son, daughter, or somebody that you had to discipline yeah. and maybe spank, because the Bible talks about spanking, it doesn't talk about time out. Right. Amen? Right. Just correct them with the rod. You with me? Yeah. Drive the folly far from them. You with me? Yeah. He says, just spare their soul from hell. He talks about spanking our children. Amen? But in the right way, not abusing, not beating them. But God says, you know, he's, he's talking to his children. He says, he says, how long are you going to be backslidden? How long are you going to do your will? How long are you going to do what you want to do? And we've been talking. Let me tell you why. Because we've been talking about a, about a people, about a church, about, and I can't talk about the assemblies of God down the street or the victory outreach or that's their church. That's their business. That's their people, but I can't talk about ours. You with me? Yeah. And God is looking, and God honors 
obedient and faithful people. He does. Many people claim to the promises of healing, of prosperity, of favor. I believe in the favor of the Lord. I believe in the favor of the Lord that it's better than riches and rubies and money. You with me? Because God owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. All the silver and gold are His. If God gives me favor, there's nothing I can't buy. You with me? I walked by this school the other day and I said, Lord, I said, that school's sitting there vacant. I said, God, wouldn't it be awesome if we had this building? I said, God, they have a gymnasium, they have a cafeteria, yeah. they have rooms for teaching, they have rooms for men's homes, women's homes, they have rooms for elderly to come and, 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 and do stuff and hang out and, you know what I mean, programs and all this. I said, God, that'd be, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Favor of God can get us that building. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Amen? I believe in all that stuff. Yeah. But I also believe, you know, and I believe in healing. I believe that God wants to heal His people. Yeah. I believe that Christians shouldn't go around sick. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But I also believe in, the, in, in, in being faithful to the Lord. Yeah. I also believe, and you got to understand that God's disciplined His people. Yeah. God, several, a couple times, He sent Him to Assyria. He sent Him to Babylon for 70 years. Yeah. Huh? He told them, I'm sending you, I'm the one that sent you there. Nobody else sent you there. I sent you there to punish you. Yeah. And many times, and Christians, we don't believe in that anymore. Right. We don't believe in discipline. We don't believe that God wants, that God will like a good father discipline his children. Right. You with me? Yeah. You, you, you know the way you look at society today, even the church, you look in the church, you know, not this church, of course, but, but another church. And you see there, you see the kids there. And they're spoiled brats. And they run the Royal Rangers and Missionettes. Yeah. And they throw a tantrum. And they'll hit their mom and dad. Yeah. They'll cuss at their mom and dad. Yeah. You with me? They'll tell them, I want this and I want it now. And throw a fit in Walmart and get their toy. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That, that, that's the way they behave. That's the way they act. And there's no control anymore over the children. The children are the ones that run the homes. They'll tell their parent what to do and all this different stuff and, you know what I mean, what I want and I don't want that to eat. I want something else to eat. Make me something else now. And the parent will jump and run and go make them whatever they want. And, 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 and if you can see that, and if you can see that as almost a mirror of the body of Christ today, the way we act towards the Lord. I, tell, I, I, always, I, I said this, one, I was talking about this one time and I said, you know, we... Uh, we have taken the word God and we've turned it around to the word dog. Right. And we treat God like a dog. Like, like, you know, here, here, go get it, boy. Go get me a blessing. Come on, come on, God. Do what I want you to do, dog. Right. You come now. You with me? Yes. And we treat God like, you know what I mean? Like he's our child. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we pray for stuff that is so absurd. And they're all about us, all selfish, and, and all this stuff, and you know what I mean? And I believe that, you know what I mean, that God gets angry with His church. Right. Hmm? Right. I know that the, you look at anybody else and they'll tell you, you look at Joel Osteen and all these preachers, and man, they'll tell you how swell you are, and that, you know, God loves you. And, that, and I believe that. You with me? Yeah. But I also believe that God gets angry. I also believe like you as a parent, because I've seen some of you. Yeah. You with me? And I've seen the way you get angry at your children, but it's not. For nothing, they deserve it. Right. They're acting a fool, they're acting a brat, they need a good nagala. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. And, 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 and so, but I've seen some of you get angry like that. Maybe even out of anger, and I've done it before. You get angry, you hit your kid out of anger, or grab them by the arm and yank them and, and all this stuff and it's like why? Because they're doing wrong and you're angry but you're doing it wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah. But God has gotten angry and God has disciplined His people. God has disciplined His church. God is disciplining His people here. Yeah. And He said, you know what man? And, and, there, and there comes, you know what I mean? There's been times in my life as a father, you know and, and believe me when I tell you this you know what I mean? My, my kids were in line. My kids didn't mess around in church. Yeah. 
My kids, because it wasn't my church. Right. You with me? Yeah. It was my pastor's church. Yeah. And when we came in, I had already warned them, you're going to behave in church. Or when we get out, you with me? Yeah. So they knew coming into church, if they messed up or did wrong, it's just like, you know after you're going to get your butt whipped. Because church is a place that's holy. Church is a place that's sacred. Right. You with me? Uh, you with me? And, 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 and my kids knew that this is not the place. You want to act up at home or something like that, but in front of people, I don't care if we're at McDonald's, Walmart, or anything like that, but when we go to church, that's God's house. Yeah. And you want to get me mad? Mess around in God's house. Yeah. And my kids knew. You with me? They knew they are going to get a whip if they jacked around in church. You with me? Because this is the Lord's house. Right. Amen? And I love the Lord's house. Amen. And I love the Lord. Amen. And I respect the Lord. And I respect right. His house. Right. So sometimes if you ever see me get mad at the kids or do anything like that, just don't say a word. You with me? Don't say nothing. If you're going to let them do whatever, then don't say nothing when I correct them. Amen. Because right. this ain't your house. Right. This is God's house. Right, man. You with me? But I believe that God gets angry and he's just, and oh, I was telling you that my, my kids, you know what I mean? Uh, one of them in particular would get me so upset and so angry. And man, I'll tell them, you know what? You're going to get, you're going to get one when we get home. And she'd say, give me two. <laughs> I'd say, okay, you got two. You know, you're driving, looking in the mirror, it's glaring at them. I'm like, could I kill you now? <laughs> you're going to get two when we get home. And she'd be in the mirror, give me three. <laughs> And I'm telling you, we would go through this until they were like 15, 16, 17. And she would, and then you'd spank her, and she wouldn't even cry. She'd just get worse. <laughs> but I remember coming to a place, and Alex, do me a favor, would you turn that off? Yeah. Coming to a place in my personal life where I was so upset with my child, and I, I would, listen, I would spank them with the rod. One time I had a, a big board. You know, Pastor Ray used to sell them boards. I don't know if any of you remember that. You would sell the boards to discipline your kids. <laughs> but this was like that. You know, I mean, I remember spanking my child, you know what I mean, and, and feeling so angry I had to stop. One time it broke the board. And they were, and, and this, this one wouldn't change. I mean, it did get worse. And I remember feeling it away, feeling a, a sense of, 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 I don't know what you call it, hopelessness. I don't know what you call it. That, you, that you're spanking your child and it's not teaching them anything. It's not helping them. They're not getting better because of it. And, and, and you're afraid you're gonna hurt them if you don't stop. You with me? And I remember feeling that and I believe that that's what the Lord is saying here. He's talking to his people and he said, huh? He said, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna hit you no more. I've already beat you from head to toe. You're black and blue. Hmm? I've punished you so much already, and you still don't learn, rebellious child. Hmm? Watch. He says, you've forsaken the Lord, the whole, the, and you provoke the Holy One of Israel unto anger. He says, they are, they are gone away uh, backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? And then, and in other words, why should I hit you more? He says, you will revolt more and more. In other words, you get worse. He says, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. He says, from the sole of their foot, even unto the, the head. You know how they say, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in the name of Jesus? This is reversed. He said, from the sole of your feet to the top of your heads, he said, there is no uh, soundness in it. He says, but, but wounds and bruises, uh, <laughs> and, and what, per, 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 is that what it says? Petrifying sores, he says, they have not been 
closed. In other words, they have they have you ever seen anybody you remember the show Roots or something like that where they would beat the slaves and literally they had the open wounds from the from the sticks or from the I mean it would just be a like a stripe on their back that would open. Yeah. He's saying, dude, your, your wounds haven't even healed yet. I've hit you and I've disciplined you and I've beat you so much and you get worse and worse with it. Now remember, he's talking to the body of Christ. He might not necessarily be talking to you tonight, but he's talking to the church. Hmm? He says, from the sole of your head, from the sole of your foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. He says, but wounds and bruises and whatever that word is, prettifying sores. He says, they have not been clothed, neither bound up, neither uh, mollified with ointment. He says, you, uh, your country is desolate. Amen? And I don't know, you don't need to, to us, when, when we, let's just say for instance, your city is desolate. Maybe your country can be your home. Maybe it can be your finances. In other words, there's nothing there. You're broke. Hmm? Right. There's no fruit. There's no. There's no. There's no veg vegetables. There's no meat. There's no. There's no people. There's no more children. There's. He said it's desolate. It's barren. He said your cities are burn are are burned with fire. <coughs> Your land, strangers devoured, devoured it in your presence, and it is dis and it is desolate. He says, as as overthrown by strangers, and the daughters of Zion is left as a co as a, as a cottage in a in a vineyard. As a lodge in a, in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Watch this. Watch what he says. This all this stuff, all this bad stuff has hit the hit these people. He said, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Now remember what a remnant is? Have you had carpet put in your home? Yeah. Yeah. And after they've done the whole house in carpet, they, they got a little square that you kind of throw by the door, wipe your feet as you come in, just a little piece. Yeah. That's a remnant. And he says, if there, unless the Lord had left that little remnant, the, all the body of Christ, all the rest of them have gone, they got messed up. But there is a little people that are obedient. There is a little people that are faithful to the Lord. Unless the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been as unto Gomorrah. How I many know that's pretty bad? Yeah, yeah. If God's saying that, you know what I mean? Unless for this remnant, we'd be like Sodom and Gomorrah, man, left to burn in ashes. He said, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. And I was reading this. He says, give ear unto the law of God, of our God, you people of Gomorrah. I was reading this and I was like, wow. I said, I wonder if God gave Sodom and Gomorrah. I wonder if Sodom and Gomorrah at one time served the Lord. I wonder if these people at one time God was giving them a chance to repent. Huh? Yeah. Why do you think Lot was there? Lot was a righteous man. Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Was it a, just a place of, of homosexuality and lesbianism and all this place that God burned? Or was it at one time God's people? Was it at one time a people that heard the word of God, that feared the word of God, and that God was speaking to them? As I was reading this, I freaked out. I was like, wow, God. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto, unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. He says, to what purpose 
is the multitude of your, of your uh, sacrifices unto me. He's talking to these leaders and he's saying, these people have sacrificed and given much to God. Yes. Sodom and Gomorrah. Wow, that's heavy duty. Yes. You people of Gomorrah, he said, to, who, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord. I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of, of fed beasts. And I, de and I delight not in the blood of, bu of bullocks or of lambs. He said, or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread, uh, to tread my courts? He says, bring, bring no more vain ob oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, uh, the callings of, of assemblies, he says, I cannot, or I cannot away with. I cannot away with. He says, it is iniquity. Even, even the, the solemn uh, meetings, in other words, even their church, even the offerings, everything they did like that, God, he detested that stuff because it wasn't from a right heart. And these people gave. You with me? These people gave. Could you imagine? You know what I mean? For us that are here, and it's so hard for us just to give. These people were giving all this stuff. These rulers and these people from Sodom and Gomorrah, from the city that was destroyed. You with me? Where am I at here? And when you spread forth your, your hands, he said, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, these people worshiped God with arms wide open. They worshiped the Lord and they made many prayers to the Lord. Come on, we're still trying to get there. Hmm? I hide my eyes from you, he said. Yea, when you make many prayers. He said, I will not hear. I'm not listening. La 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 la. Huh? He says, Your hand your your hands are full of blood. Wash you, wash you. In other words, take a shower, bro. Make your clothes or Make your clothes, make you clean, excuse me. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Amen? Learn to do well. Is this what he's telling us? Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed. Judgment doesn't mean we're judging people. Judging means is that we're doing right to those who need help and justice in their life, that we're doing right to them. Because there's more than coming to church. Yeah. There's many causes out there yeah. to help illegal aliens get their, you know what I mean, to help women who are looking, they don't have nowhere else to turn, so figure, they feel that they need to have an abortion and, and do all this. There's so many places and things to work at as a Christian to help people, yeah. foster kids, well, you know what I mean, different things. After school, I think Al was, you were one that was saying that you'd like to start a program in one of the schools after school yeah. to stay and help them with educating or reading or math or whatever it is and see stuff like that. I mean, well, why not? Yeah. 
do a service for God like that, and then, hey, by the way, this Thursday night, if you want to come to youth group, here's our card. Give me a call, I'll pick you up. Hmm? There's so many things out there we can do, but we haven't even got there yet because we're still tripping on ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Come on now. Amen. When I was serving the Lord, when me and my wife went after God with all our hearts, I mean, we were not only praying, fasting, seeking the Lord, a part of worship, a part of praise, the nurseries, the youth groups, everything we were doing. We were also thinking, feeding the homeless, you know what I mean, giving clothes to the naked, you know what I mean, doing whatever we can, outreach, Friday night, um, a street ministry, all this different stuff, our life revolved around it. Everything we did was for God. And everything we still do is for the Lord. Amen. You with me? And we couldn't, we could, we could still find room in our lives to do more for the Lord. Amen. You with me? Amen? Amen. I told you the other day, I said, you know what? There's a there's a, 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 a right here by East High, there's a, a nursing home there that they've asked us, you know, uh, uh, to to go in and and, and uh, 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 start a little Bible study or visit the people and pray for them and this and that. And, you know what I mean? There's been times where I said, I can't do it. I guess it could be one more thing I'm going to do by myself. But I said, I'm not going to do that. You with me? And, 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 and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm waiting on something and I'm still waiting. But I said, you know what? Maybe if we have to, we'll start something to where we go in and that once a week or something like that to just go in and love on some people and pray on some people in that nursing home. Maybe give them a little flyer, give them a piece of candy. Tell them God loves you. You with me? Amen. Amen. If I guess if I have to, I can do that too. You with me? But there's so many things we can do in this, in this life if we would just take our mind and our hearts off of ourselves. There's so much ministry out there available. But we haven't even got there yet because we're still tripping on me. Yep. We're tripping on ourselves. Yep. You with me? We're still tripping on our own little four and us won't no more. And, 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 and you know what I mean? We haven't even got there yet. And God, you know what I mean? If you push in there and you give God everything, God will open avenues of ministry for yep. you. Yep. To blow your mind. Yep. Mission trips, this and that, you know, and all this stuff. But you've got to get in there. You've got to give Him everything. Yep. Hmm? Amen. He says, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your, of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Seek judgment. Yes. Seek to do right. Seek a good cause yes. to go after. Yes. Relieve the oppressed. Who's the oppressed? What's oppressed? People that are messed up by the devil. Yeah. He says, find a way to relieve these people of their oppression. Hmm? Yeah. We're still talking about, I don't know, I just, I'm just feeling overwhelmed. All this, well, the devil will keep you right there for years and years. Right. Unless you can learn to break free of that thing, rebuke him, put him under your feet and go help people that are in need. Yeah. The best way to get your answer to prayer is to go help somebody with their prayer. Yeah. To go water somebody that's hurting. You with me to go pray for somebody's marriage and your marriage is all jacked up. To go pray for somebody's children, tell them there's hope for your baby and yours is in jail. That's right. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. When you take care of God's people, He'll take care of yours. That's right. Yeah. Hmm? Come on, somebody. <laughs> learn to do well. To do well is something you must learn. It's not something you just know, normally do. You might do it once, but then you forget about it. And you must learn to do something, to do well for people's lives. It's something you have to learn. You have to cease to do evil. That means you have to stop it. It ain't going to stop itself. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. It doesn't mean you're going to go and bring judgment on the orphans. Hmm? Judge them, to, to, to do something good for them, to think about them. To do something for these kids that have no mom and dad, these, fo these foster children and stuff like that, to do something for them. Right. To plead for the widow. Hmm? Yeah. Do something for, a, for somebody that doesn't have anybody else. Right. You with me? And if you want to know the definition of a widow, the Bible will tell you that too. 
It's a woman who has no sons, no daughters, no nobody else to care for her. And the Bible requires us as Christians to help that woman. Or that man. Amen. You with me? Amen. Amen. And it says if there's anybody else in their families, let them help their, that person. Amen. But if they have no one else, that that's where the church is required to help. Amen. He says... Plead for the widow. Now, 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 he, now he's saying all this stuff and he starts to shift gears and he says, come now. What does some of you say right there? Are you with me? Yes. What does it say right there in your Bible? Come now. He says, and let us reason together. What does it say, come now? Because this is King James I'm reading now. So it says, come sit down, let's argue the job. Come and sit down, let's argue the Do you know the Jewish people do that? You know the Jew, the, 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 if you go to one of these Jewish temples in town, they go in like we have men's or something on Wednesday, you know what I mean, and stuff like that, or women's and stuff. What they do is they go in and they'll find a portion of scripture and what they'll do is they'll argue it, argue about it, argue it out. That's what he said right there. Come on, now sit down, let's argue this thing out. Let's talk about this. You know one of the worst things that we're guilty of is the body of Christ? I hope you're listening on YouTube because I'm talking to you. What we're guilty of in the, in the church is, is a, uh, I don't know even how to put it forth or how to say it correctly, but it's a lack of communication. We have no communication skills. And maybe it's a fault of us pastors. Maybe it's something we need to teach the people. And I'm trying. I'm trying to help the, you know what I mean, the people. I'm trying to help, especially the men. Yep. You need to learn to communicate. Yep. You women need to learn to communicate. Right, yeah. What does that mean? Well, like I, I, I texted somebody today, told them, hey, why weren't you in church? You were a no-show, no-call. Yeah. I said, according to employment standards, you're fired. Try <laughs> Because how many of you, I mean, I don't know if any of you own a business or stuff like that, but what happens if you just don't show up to work? I mean, just, I mean, come on, you understand, I have things to do. You with me? Yeah. You, maybe your first time you'll get a warning, yeah. <laughs> but eventually you're going to get fired. Yeah. Just don't call, I mean, they're expecting you to be there, yeah. and you just don't want to show up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No show, no call. You're fired. Go to the unemployment line and look for a job and try and get one. Try. Right. You with me? Yeah. Because you're fired. So when that deals with our finances, you know what I mean. And, and, and to us, that's very important. <coughs> but why ain't God that important? That's right. You with me? That's right. I'm telling you. I, I and I've said it before. On one hand, I can count the times I've ever missed church. We're talking Sunday morning, Sunday night, prayer. We're talking uh, Thursday night for us or Wednesday night back in the day for, a, uh, for us. That, I, that We were in prayer. We were in church. We never missed. Sure. Even when we go to other cities and other countries, I make sure, and I challenge my kids today, my, my, my real kids, my daughter in California, and my other one, I send her a note too. You know what I mean? Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together with the saints. <laughs> Hmm? Right. I told my daughter in California, you're in San Francisco, you're over here in San Jose. Are you going to church this morning? Right. And she said, well, we're driving back. And my, you know, to me, that's an excuse. Yeah. To me, God comes first. Yeah. Right. To me, you find a church right there by where you're at. Because yeah. we got Google or, or MapQuest or all that stuff to find Ross and everything else in the city. What are we, what are we, what are we looking for just Seven for Falls. Seven Falls, huh? Yeah. We can find that place even in the broad. We're going in circles and hitting deer and you know and all those other stuff. We can find all this, but we can't find church. Yeah. You with me? Right. And I'll do that to my own kids. I'll throw that out there and just say, you know what? Mm, did you go to church today? Because I don't want my kids to go to hell. Right. I want them to learn to honor God first before your marriage before your children, before your entertainment, before your fun, before anything else. Remember God on Sunday morning at 10. Right, man. Mm -hmm. Or even if you have to work, whatever, you be in this service in the evening. Yeah. 
but to remember the Lord, you put him first. Because it's a covenant between you and him. That I love you, God. I love you. Not about my dad. Not about my mom. It's not about my, my wife, my husband, my children. It's about me and you. And many people, and he's talking about rebellious people, and, and we don't understand this in the body of Christ. Right. We think our pastors being mean, our leaders being mean yeah. to us, yeah. and they offend me. That's right. What's wrong with nothing? Pastor said this in service, <laughs> like little babies, huh? Crying. What I was talking about was communication. Yeah. No show, no no call. Yeah. I said, you wouldn't do that for your work. That's right. Why would you do that to God? Right. And why would you do that to your pastor who loves you? That's right. People don't understand that. We don't know what loyalty is, brother. I'm sorry. Right, we do not know what loyalty is. And I'm trying to teach our church, especially our men. Yeah. Loyalty is heavy with God. That's right. Man. Why weren't you here? Why didn't you call at least? Yeah. And I told them before. When you call, at least I know, hey, listen, something came up. I have an emergency, and Pastor, I'm not going to make it. And this is the reason, but I'll see you tonight. Communicate. Yep. You with me? Whenever you're doing stuff, whenever you can't do stuff, communicate. We're yep. so bad at that. Yep. I don't know how we even get, get good jobs. That's right. You with me? Right. And I've learned that Christians are some of the worst ones at communication skills. Yep. We know everything else for the world, but we don't know how to communicate in the church. Yeah. We don't even know how to communicate one with another. Right. Huh? Why didn't right. you come? I didn't have a right. Well, don't they have 30 people in the church that you can call? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't think about it. You with me? Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Communicate. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You know what I mean? He says, come now. And let us reason together. Remember, Emmanuel said, let's sit down and let's argue this thing out. Says the Lord, and I want you to read the rest of that in a minute, Emmanuel, but it says, Lord, uh, let's reason to, uh, together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red, uh, red like crimson, they shall be white as a wool. Man, you read that last portion for me there. It says, this is God's message. If your sins are blood red, they'll be snow white. If they're red like crimson, they'll be like wool. God's doing this. Yes. God's making a way for you. Yep. He's saying, listen, I've already disciplined you. I've beat you. I've spanked you. I've corrected you. I've yelled at you and put you in time out. Yeah. Or the toothbrush. I said, could you imagine if we put people in our church on the toothbrush? Yeah. They go talk about this church, huh? Put us on the on the, on the internet that we're a cult and we're, we're you know what I mean, doing all this stuff. And I said, shh, you can't do that to them. Not to, not to, you. could you imagine putting some of these kids, yeah. making them, do chores and stuff like that. They'll call 911 and turn you over child abuse. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Throw the trash. I don't want to. Huh? He said, let's reason together. Though your sins are scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, I'll make them white as wool. He's, he's paid the price for us. He said, man, I beat you. I've done all this. And I'm tired of it already. I just want peace in our home. Don't you guys understand that? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. How many of you ever felt like your home is a war zone? Yeah. I used to feel like we go to church, and church is like, a, at least you feel some peace, and you feel the Spirit of God, and then you go home, and it's almost like you dread going home because you know uh, that, that whole house is about to break loose, yeah. and you're like, man, you know what I mean? Some people don't want to come to church. Right, man. Some people don't want to go home. Yeah. yeah. Huh? I was one of those people. I was like, man, I... You know what I mean? I remember the days. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, man, I'm telling you, if some of you can go back and see our lives, I remember just the families 
you know, getting crazy and all this stuff and spanking one and this one screaming and crying and my wife getting involved and, and it caused conflict between us and all this stuff. Oh my God. And then we had to go to church or prayer or, you know, I mean, and, oh, it just seems like you're so torn up. Yeah. Just yeah. trying to serve God. Yeah. Just trying to be a Christian home, teach our kids. You might have a Bible study with Brookie and Maya and Layla and Gracie and, and then Vince. <laughs> and having a Bible study and they're trying and they're like, stop it. <laughs> and you're really trying to get into it, just trying to teach them and preach. You feel the anointing and they're fighting and hitting each other. <laughs> Screaming and crying, pulling hair. And you're like, well, you're not going to your room. You're going to your room. And you know, you know I mean, a, a simple Bible study just ended up in World War III and you're mad and upset, started hitting kids for no reason, just to make you feel better. And then you're in the, you know what I mean, spouse arguing and all this stuff, but you're just trying to serve the Lord. Yeah. And then you, you got to go to church. Right. You know, all this stuff happening and it's just, man, I just wish there was peace. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. And I would, you know what I mean? It was, man, it was like, God, you got to do something here. The devil's right there, man, throwing it in the mix. All that stuff and fighting and, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, man, he's saying, come on, let's reason together. I don't care how bad you are. Right. I'll make you white as snow. Right. I don't care what you do. I'll make you white as wool. Yeah. You with me? Lay it down. Give it to me, he said. You with me? Yeah. I'm with it. And I'm getting to where I want to get to in verse 19. He says, if you be willing and obedient. Amen. Not just if you're willing, not just if you're obedient, because you can be obedient and be rebellious in your heart. That's right. You can go do what you're told to do, and all the way, you can't believe it, God wants to tell me to do it. Hey, doing this, and they always have me do it. I don't know why they don't ask the other person to do it. No, 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 no. You, but you did what you were supposed to do, but you did it with the rebellious heart yeah. and you get no reward for it. Right. He said this, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. How many want to eat good? Man, man. How many man. want to go to Golden Corral right now? Yeah. <laughs> Gina, did you live, you live to Anna? Me and Gina will be back. We're going to start at the desserts and work our way down to the maybe to the salads. <laughs> But this is where I wanted to get all this stuff. He's telling them, we rebelled, you done wrong, you did all this, and I beat you and spanked you and all this, and I'm tired of hitting you. I even wore myself out spanking you. You got bruises from head to toe, open wounds, and you still don't learn. How many got some kids like that? Yeah. How many times have they been in prison? Yeah. How many times have they been in jail? How many times have they been beat up, left half dead there in the street? Yeah. I still don't learn. Yeah. You know why? You know why I stand here. You know what I mean, preaching to you. I remember Thursday night we had an awesome service. Yeah. But why did I preach? Why did I share my story? Why did I do that? Why did I have a, my 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 eyesight all jacked up? There, my body tore up from gunshot wounds and all this, so that I could stand there, so that I could tell them, you don't have to do what go through what I went through. You don't have to be shot. You don't have to overdose or, 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 or be so drunk you're going to die of, of alcohol poisoning. You don't have to go through all this. We've already been through it. You know what's a trip and what's probably one of the hardest things for me is that everything that I got, everything that is wrong with me is wrong with my son. His eyes, his left eye too, is messed up. Can't see out of it. He's had some teeth knocked out. He's had worse than I have. His leg almost cut off. You with me? Back opened up, taking a whole muscle out of his back to cover his leg and all this stuff. So he's got all this stuff like this guy, open wounds and all this stuff. And he says, and I'm tired of beating you already to try because we think, well, maybe this will help him. Maybe they'll learn by going to jail and I've learned that they don't learn. Maybe prison will change them, and it don't change them. And God's frustrated, and he's, 
Ah, what do I do with you? With his people, with his children. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cover you in the blood. I'm going to wash you myself. You don't deserve it, and you didn't earn it, but my grace is sufficient, and he covered them, and he forgave them. And then he comes to his part, and he said, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And I, and I found what the, the, the Hebrew translation for the word willing, because we kind of have an idea what obedient is, listening and doing. But, but, but willing, he said, he, it, what, it, what it came down to was it, it said to be a quiescent. Now this word I didn't know. It's it's, it's spelled A C Q U I, a quiescent, C E N T. And so I looked it up because I'm not that bright. It says this: ready. Remember, if you're willing, if you're ready to accept something without protest, without complaining, without, you with me? Grumbling. Or to do what someone else wants. If you're willing, ready to do something without complaining, or to do something somebody else wants, and obedient, if you hear and you do it, you shall eat the good of the land. Hmm? This is where we have a big problem as Christians because we don't want to do what we don't want to do. You with me? And the thing is, as I was telling you today, that he says, don't be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what I said was, I wish I had that trash can Pastor Robert had. Where's that white one at? We, we want to come in and serve the Lord and bring all our baggage here and say, you know what, here, here's my trash can. You know, go ahead and we got all these thoughts and all these feelings and emotions we haven't died to. And pastor is trying to teach us, you know, hey, you know what, you need to come over here and do this. Why? Because uh, I said so. That's not good enough. I don't have to do anything because the Lord knows my heart and blah, 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 and arguing, and talking back, and all this stuff, and you know what, we'll just show him. We'll show him. We just won't show up for church. Yeah. And, and you think you're punishing us by not showing up. You with me? Yeah. And saying, you know what, we're not going to do this. I'm not going to follow instructions. I don't have to do anything because the Lord knows my heart. Yeah. And yes, he knows your heart is wicked. You with me? And, and nobody can know your heart. Nobody, I mean, nobody can help you except the Lord. Right. Because He knows your heart. You with me? We don't want to do what we don't want to do. We don't want to be told what to do. Remember I told you the other night, the wild stallions on the mountains? Yeah. The Mustangs of yeah. Colorado? Prison inmates break and sell? Yeah. To help the, in the prison uh, system and stuff financially? They have to be broken. We want to come in here and bring all our baggage and, and break the pastor. Yeah. You know that there's times pastors go home freaking out in their minds thinking, maybe I'm the one that needs to change. Yeah. Somebody said it the other day, Al, I don't remember, I thought we were cruising and we were talking yeah. and, and, and I think it was Paula White or somebody said that, you know what I mean, they, they, we're the ones that, you know, they, they, they want us to conform. Yeah. They want us to change the, the you know the word. We want they want they they want a new age church. Yeah. They want a seeker friendly church, a church that you know everything you do is all right with God. Even if you go sin, it's all right because His grace will cover you. No, His grace covers you, so you won't sin. Yeah, yeah. So it'll help you, so you don't do wrong. Right. Not so that you can do it and then do whatever you want, live however you want, be however you want, not change, be the same old person again. And we learned about that today. You're a new creature in Christ. Yeah. Hmm? He's talking to him and he's saying, if you're willing to do something you, somebody else wants you to do. Yeah. It's so hard, especially, if, I don't know if it's hard for you ladies, but yeah. it's hard for men. Yeah. It's hard for men to take correction or to take a rebuke from the, yeah. a leader or a pastor. Right. I don't really want to puff up, swell up, like, let's get this. I was the same way at 19 years old. Yeah. But I only took one time. Yeah. 
You with me? I didn't take a hundred times to finally snap and get it. I only took one time for the for not only the individual but the Holy Spirit to to say, step back. Right. Amen. Yes, Lord. I'm not bad, God. You're bad. Yeah. Are you with me? I'm not thinking I'm bad. I'm not trying to puff up or swell up on the Lord or His people. I want to be submitted. I want to be humble. I want to be broken. I want you to use me. I want to follow you. I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. He said, why don't I, Holy Spirit, lead me? Well, because you're rebellious. You don't want to listen. You won't follow instructions. What makes you think you're going to follow His instructions? When He convicts your heart and you put Him out. Yeah. I don't want to listen to you right now. Yeah. I'm going to go do what I want to do. Hang out right. what I want to do. Right. Live how I want to live. Yeah. Come when I want to come. Give what I want to give. Do whatever I want to do. You still haven't learned to be willing. That's right. Hmm? To be willing to do something somebody else asks you to do. That's right. It's voluntary. See, at your job, they pay you to do that. Yeah. And that's why you put the suit on and the silly hat, and some people will stand out there with the Statue of Liberty sign, you know, be waving at the crowd that drives by for seven, eight dollars an hour, and all this stuff looking silly because they get <laughs> That's right. You with me? That's right. But in the church, it's all volunteer. It's all, you know, because. You want to because you love God. Right. I, you know, I was thinking about that and I was, I was thinking, you know, about Pastor Ray's church and the youth pastors that he's had there. And he, had a, he has Pastor uh, Joseph and Sister Sophia there now. And I see them, man, they, you know what I mean? They, 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 they're like us, you know what I mean? They just have a handful of kids there. They do their best with the praise and worship that they can. Yeah. And Sophia gets up there and she's, she's excited and Joseph gets up there and he shares, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's like, man, why would they do that? Why would they go to the service after service? And I told them, and you guys don't have just Thursday, Wednesday night. You have, you're in every service, every service? So every service, Pastor Ray's preaching, they're in the back preaching. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. So this at least three times a week. That they're giving their whole heart and soul to what four or five maybe eight kids yeah that is hard that's hard for a pastor that's hard for a preacher you with me yeah. to give everything that i have in my heart and soul to a handful of people and not that not that i take that for granted don't get me wrong you with me because i love my church Amen. but it's but it, but to have people who who who, who take it for granted Everything that I give, everything, my whole heart and soul. My wife said, this church is our baby. Yeah. We've given everything. We've wept. We've bled. We've given everything, our homes, everything we can for the gospel. Amen. Just to have a, you know, maybe some people, ah, I don't want to go tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go. I'm too tired. No, are you tired? I'm tired. I, I, they're going to have to understand. Yeah. Here we're pouring our hearts out. Right. With me? My wife's right. tired and you know I'm taking care of kids now. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But she still does it so that yeah. you can sit in here and get changed. Yeah. Not so you can get in, entertained, but maybe that God can touch you and save you and help you. And maybe you could become a person of God because she took care of your kids for a while. Yeah. And she's been doing it for 21 years. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And we, so we did it 10 years before that, that we were in our other church, serving our pastors, giving all our heart and soul, man, for the gospel, nursery, youth, children's, outreach, feeding the home, all that, we gave everything we always have. And you get this, you know, I mean, uh, Joseph and Sophia, you get uh, a pastor BJ and his wife and, and others, and Pastor Robert and his wife, I was thinking of them. Because they go in there and he preached his heart out to the youth. He didn't say, brother, come on now, there's 12 kids. I ain't got time for that. I want a good offering, brother. I have to live too. He didn't say that. He came in and he gave his heart and soul on that pulpit so that them kids could maybe get touched. Yeah. And, 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 they, and, they, and I know they struggle too because we do. Yeah. You with me? 
But even, you know, they don't, they don't see it that way. To them, I said, what kind of people would do something like this? Only people that are sold out for Jesus yeah. would deal with youth and their problems and their rebelliousness and, and they don't want to come and they're fighting and they're, they're sleeping around and they're doing drugs and you got to go get them and help them and pray for them. Who's going to do something like that for these kids that don't even care about you? That's right. Somebody that's sold out for Jesus. Right. Amen. Somebody that's willing to answer the call. That's right, amen. amen. Somebody that's willing to go back there and not be fed every service. Come on. Yeah. How many services have you been in here in, in our church? Yeah. And, and I mean, you're in here and, 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 and maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe you're not helping in other areas. You just come in here and get the word, 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 and get the word. Get, 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 and maybe even get bored with the getting. Yeah. Why is that? Because you're not giving. Try it. Because you're not giving. Try it. You with me? If you eat, need, 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 don't poop. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be a sick individual. Right. You're going to end up in the hospital and maybe even dead yep. because you didn't give. Huh? That's right. And it's the same thing with, with your Christianity. You've got to be willing to serve. You've got to be willing to help. Amen. You've got to be willing to look for opportunities yep. and say, how can I help my church grow? Yep. People come in here, and I, you know what I mean? When they sit here, and when they watch, and when oh, service after service after service don't help, you start, you know what I mean? You start getting anxious and thinking, maybe I need a new church. No, what you need to do is help. Yeah. What you need to do is begin to pray and fast and say, God, what ministry can I start that can help new old ministries lie on fire in our city? What youth program? What children's program? What outreach? What, what, what extension of the church, what parachute ministry can I do that can help our ministry or be a blessing to our pastors? Yeah. What can I do? I'm not satisfied with right. eating and eating and eating and right. eating and eating right. and not giving and not serving and not helping. What can I do? Right. It's going to be a willing and obedient. You're going to eat the good of the land. Yeah. I'll bless you. I'll prosper you. I'll help you. I'll keep you healthy. Why should God keep you healthy? That's right. Why should He give you healing? That's right. Yeah. So you can be selfish and live for yourself and not give anybody or help anybody? Right. Why does He keep these ministers and everybody keep them going after yeah. years of yeah. service? Uh, and man, no matter what, no matter what they go through, they keep God keeps healing them. You yeah. see the pastors, Pastor yeah. Gilbert. Man, that guy's have been dead almost I don't know how many times. And Pastor Ray flies. All the way to Fresno, comes into those the room where he's almost dead. He says, you're not dying, brother. You know what I mean? In the name of Jesus, he raises little Gilbert up. <laughs> Gilbert. He says, God has a purpose for you. You're not going to die. You're going to live and preach the gospel. Yeah. Now he's helping some other church. And he's past, you have me pastoring that church where the pastor. Hmm? Yeah. Been wrecked and dead and thrown out of the car and there you pastor. Shh. <laughs> you're not going to die. You're going to live. You're going to preach. God has a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Poor little Gilbert, man. He's, uh, he's there all little 80 pounds on there, man. You know, preaching and sharing his faith and getting down for Jesus. Why? Because he's sold out. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. His pastor sold out for God. Yep. Hmm? Right. Because he's willing, he's obedient, he's eating the good of the land. And people, they want to eat the fruit. They want to get the blessings and eat the good of the land. They don't want to be willing. They're not willing to do anything but for themselves. Right. They don't help anybody but themselves. You don't want to be that kind of person. Right, man. You don't want to be like that. You want to be a, not just a giver of the finances of our church, but a giver of your life. Yeah. Not just a Mexican dinner once a month, but every day they met together from house to house. They ate together, they fellowship together, they prayed together, they listened to the word together, they served each other, sold their possessions. If anybody had need, you with me, they met those needs. That's the church. Yeah. That's right. 
That's right. How many of you know today that that's not the picture we see today? That's right, Dad. We see a church that is a selfish and they would give a, maybe give a dollar. We had some people that God forgive, forgive them, but the man is dead today. The woman's half cracked in her mind and out there, but these individuals would come and every service they'd give seven cents in the offering. And these people had money. They weren't rich by any means, but they had money. They didn't even give a dollar. Seven cents every service. When he was killed or when he died, you know what I mean? You see stuff like that and you're like, that's why. Because it starts in your heart. And all God's worth and all that preacher up there is worth to you. All this church and this facility and these lights and the air and, and the restrooms and everything we have to do, all that's worth seven cents to you. Hmm? Every single time? I don't think so. And they wonder why they died. They wonder why they're weak. They wonder why they're sick. Because hmm? yeah. they want to live for themselves, do what they want to do, live how they want to live, come when they want to come, give what they want to give. Yeah. Help as little as they can possibly help. Yeah. But for their family and for everybody else, man, oh, they're, they're, they're champions, they're heroes, they're doing, fixing everybody's, doing everybody's and all that, but for the house of the Lord, That's right. you're lucky to get a little bit out of them. Right, man. And they say, oh, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> he said, if you're willing and obedient, if you're willing to do something you don't want to do, and then fall in love with it. And, are you with me? Yeah. To do something you don't want to do and then love it. Mad. Hmm? Mad. To, 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 to love people who are unlovable. Yeah. yeah. Because I believe that we're going to see an outpouring of God. I believe we're going to see some people come in here that, man, we've had people come in here. How I many remember that guy that came into our service one time? Cindy, you remember? He came in, he had so many tattoos all over his face. He had 666 here. He, yeah. his, name, his name was Little Bear or something. Remember him? Yeah. He came in, his eyes were tattooed. Tattooed everywhere. He came in and talked about, I'm a, I'm a minister out of the Church of the Universe. Yeah. Look at 666, tattooed everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh dear Jesus, have mercy on your church. Yeah. Huh? Where'd you get your uh, from the internet? <laughs> Talk, you, he scared some of the ladies, yeah. so you know, just being around there and stuff. Yeah. And we're going to get people like that that are going to come in that God's going to want to deliver them. He yeah. set them free from demons yeah. and from evil spirits and all that stuff. And they're going to turn around and go out, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they need leaders, they need helpers, they need people that are servants to yeah. show them how to do it. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. I don't know about you, but I like to eat good. Amen. The last verse I have for you is the very next verse, verse 7, verse 20. He said, if you're willing and obedient, verse 19, you'll eat the good of the land. He said, but if you refuse and rebel, he says, you shall be destroyed with the sword. And he says this, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hmm? He says, you want to be willing and obedient? I'll bless you. I'll, 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 man, you know what I mean? I'll provide every need you have. I'll keep you healthy. I'll bless your marriage. Your children will be saved. I mean, all this stuff. He said, I'll do it for you if you're willing to do something you don't want to do for me. If you're obedient, which means I'm listening and obeying. Yeah. We want it from our children, but do we do it ourselves? Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Just simple. And, and sister said it the other night in her skit. Just, I just want to see if you can follow instructions. And the sad thing about it is, 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 is what you've seen in the women's home. You're going to look at the church and you're going to say, what happened? What happened? I'm sure you've seen it in the home. Women that were rebellious and that were just... Everything you did, kick against it, and, and eventually leave the, leave the thing and go to be destroyed. Because he said it, if you don't, you refuse, you'll be destroyed by the sword. Pastor Ray told us a story, he said, you know what, that they had a woman in the home. And he said, and the woman, that was, she was there, she was doing so good. And, and, and they told her, they said, she said, I came to, she came to them and said, I'm leaving, I'm going back to Albuquerque. 
And they said, Hita, don't go back. Don't go back. Let God do what he's doing in your life. You're doing good here. And, 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 and she said, no, I got to go back and take care of this or whatever. I don't know what she was doing. But when we went on our mission trip to Albuquerque, some of the ladies that were there that we met were telling us, you know what I mean, about this. Pastor Ray confirmed it, that this lady went back to Albuquerque rebellious from the home. And she went back and she said that when we were there, they had just found her body or parts of her that were burned and buried in the desert. When she went back to this, you know, because we got to go back to our husband or the one that beat us and did all this stuff. When she went back to him, he killed her, cut her in pieces, burned her body and threw her in the desert and they found little portions of her. And she had just come from the women's home. Hmm? He said, if you refuse to do what I tell you to do, he said, you'll be destroyed by the sword. She was cut in pieces. Oh, hmm? Because we want to do what we want to. We don't want to listen to our leaders, our pastors. We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. And we've seen them in New Hope <laughs> Ministries. Yeah. They've died. Yeah. They've died a horrible death. And it's like, man, you know, we've had a bunch of them. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And I said, man, you know, this is, this is, you know, God brought you here to change your life. You know, this is not one of these churches you can just drop in and drop out of and, and all this. This is a church where God brought you here by, by name. He's called you. Yeah, he brought you here for a purpose. And, and, and people, you know, they don't understand. We're here in New Hope to help with these pastors, for, for, to fulfill the vision God put in their hearts, yeah. to do what they need us to do so that we can help them fulfill their purpose and the purpose of New Hope in Pueblo. We're all here for ourselves. Not everybody, but some people. Yeah. We're here for us, and you know we don't want to get too involved, and we want to back up and let Pastor Susan do it. You see her come up here, broken back and everything already, and it ought to convict your heart and say, yeah. Jesus, how can I let my pastor do that? Right. How can I not grab that broom out of her hand or take that frying pan out of her hand and say, you know what, you sit down, let me do it. Yeah. Oh, well, she's stubborn. Well, so are you. Yeah. Huh? You want to rebel, rebel against that and say, you know what, I want to do it. No, you sit down. Let me help you. Yeah. Let me help you fulfill what God has for you. Sit there and rest. How many years have you done this now? Right. Hmm? Right. You need to rest. You need to fix your eyes on the Lord yeah. and get your message ready for August and two weeks and let me do this. Yeah. Not, not look at everybody else. You know, look at the ones that are helping and Oh man, look at them go. Look at them go. There they go again. Yeah. Wow. You get dizzy watching them. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Become a part. Man. Do what God wants you to do. Pray about it. To God, there's got to be something that I'm good at, something that I can help at. I want to serve. I want to help. Our community is going to hell. And, I, and even in the worship, I try and get, get you that understanding. If we don't do something, who will? If we don't do something, who will? If not us, then who? Huh? If not us, then who? We've got to be willing. We've got to be broken. Before Jesus gave the, the, the bread to, to, and the fish to the 5,000, he broke it. And then he gave it to them. And before we can ever be effective to a city, we must be broken. Hmm? Yes. Think about it. Try. Don't look at me like that. Huh? Try. See, because if you don't love your city, yeah. and I know you, you say you do, but there's a saying and there's a doing. Try. If you love your city, you're going to pray for your city. Try. And you're going to weep for your city. Try. You're going to fast for your city. And you're going to go tell your city, Jesus loves you. Try. Yeah. Repent. You with me? Amen. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Stand with me tonight.